Welcome back to Calculus 2. In this series, we want to learn the definition of Taylor and Maclaurin series and practice constructing them. From the last section, we ended with the concept of looking at a function and finding a power series that converges to the function. So given some function f of x, we wish to find a power series that converges to the function f. The term power series maybe sounds a little bit intimidating, but remember a power series we just think of as an infinite polynomial. It's just a polynomial with infinitely many terms. So how do we find a power series that starts to look more and more like a function? Here's our strategy. We're going to start by just finding a polynomial first. So we'll start by finding a polynomial, or a finite power series, if you will, a polynomial whose first several derivatives match the derivatives of the function at some x value a, and we call this x value a the center. This is a foundational concept, and it's really the background of how we choose to define Taylor and Maclaurin series. So it's crucial that we understand this. If we can find a polynomial whose derivatives match the derivatives of our function, then that polynomial will start to look like the function. Let's explore this with example one. In example one, we just have a generic degree four polynomial. And we want to think of the function e raised to the two x power. This is our f of x function. And we want to find values for the coefficients for this polynomial so that the y value of the polynomial and the first four derivatives match the y value and first four derivatives of this function as long as we're at x equals zero. And this again, this is our a value. This is called the center. Let's work through this problem, and it should help us to understand the general formula for Taylor series once we're finished. I'm going to think of my polynomial p of x here. This is c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus c cubed x, uh, c sub 3x cubed plus c sub 4x to the fourth. These c values are just different constants, and that's actually what we're trying to solve for here. We're going to see what the appropriate values for these constants are so that this polynomial starts to look like the function f of x, which is e to the 2x. We're going to think of taking derivatives here for both of these, uh, for both the polynomial and the function. We're going to take up to the fourth derivative, and then we're going to determine what the values of these coefficients are so that this polynomial matches this function up to the fourth derivative when we're at x equals zero. So let's just work through taking derivatives both of the polynomial and of the function now. So derivatives of the polynomial, p prime of x, well the derivative of the constant c0 is just zero, so I have uh, the derivative of c1x, I'm going to write that as 1 times c1, and then the derivative of c2x squared, that is 2c2x, the derivative of c sub 3x cubed, that is 3c3x squared, plus 4c sub 4x cubed. Now take a second derivative. With the second derivative, this constant term goes away, and we take the derivative of 2c1x. Again, I'm going to write that as 2 times 1c1, then the derivative of 3 sub uh, times c sub 3x squared, I take the derivative of the x squared, the 3 and the c sub 3 are just constants, so those don't matter. So I have plus 3 times 2 c sub 3x plus 4 times 3 c sub 4x squared. Take another derivative. The third derivative, the derivative of the constant 2 times 1 times c1 is 0, and then the derivative of 3 times 2 times c3 times x, that's 3 times 2 times 1 c3 plus 4 times 3 times 2 c sub 4x. One more derivative, the fourth derivative. Instead of writing four tick marks, I'm going to just write a 4 in parentheses. The fourth derivative of the polynomial, again, the derivative of the constant term is 0, so we just have the derivative of this. I have a constant times x, so the derivative is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 c4. Quite a bit of busy work, but there's the first four derivatives for that polynomial. Notice that the fifth derivative is zero, because if we take the next derivative, we'd just be taking the derivative of the constant and we get zero. Let's look at the first four derivatives of our function, f of x equals e to the 2x. This involves chain rule. So I take the derivative of e to the power, that's e to the power, times the derivative of the power. The derivative of 2x is two. So there's the first derivative. 
The next derivative is 2 times the derivative of e to the 2x, so 2 times 2 I'll get 4 e to the 2x. In the third derivative, I have 4 times the derivative of e to the 2x, so that's 4 times 2, 8 e to the 2x. And the fourth derivative here is 8 times 2, 16 e to the 2x. So there are the derivatives for the function e to the 2x. I want these derivatives when x equals 0. So we're going to plug in 0 for x, and we're going to see what happens at x equals 0. Plug in 0 into the derivatives for the polynomial, then plug it in for the original function, and then we want to correlate those and solve for the values of these constants. So for p of x, when x equals 0, p of 0, well, we're plugging in a 0 for x. So all these zeros means that all these terms just go away. So we just have c sub 0. So the polynomial when x equals 0 is just the constant term c sub 0. p prime of 0, we have a similar thing happen. When we plug in 0 into the first derivative, all of these terms go away because we just plug in 0 for x. So we have 1 times c1. Plug 0 into the second derivative. Similarly, we just have the constant term. This is 2 times 1 times c2. Plug into the third derivative. And we have 3 times 2 times 1 times c3. Now plug into the fourth derivative. Well, if we just plug in 0 here, there's no x on the other side to plug in. So the fourth derivative at 0 is just that constant. It's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 c4. Do you notice a pattern here? Look at these coefficients. There's a 1, 1, 2 times 1, 3 times 2 times 1, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What are those numbers? Hopefully you recognize those as the factorial numbers. That is not a coincidence. We are going to see factorials involved in this answer here. Let's compare what happens if we plug in 0 into the function f of x. So first we look at f of 0. f of 0, I'm going to write this maybe a little bit backwards from how we usually would write it. This is e to the 2 times 0. e to the 2 times 0 is e to the 0. That's just 1. Now look at f prime of 0. f prime of 0, we're plugging in 0 for x. So we have 2 times e to the 0. Once again, e to the 0 is 1. So we have 2 times 1. f prime of 0 is 2. f double prime of 0. Once again, e to the 0 is just 1, so we get 4. We're going to get 4, 8, 16 for the different derivatives when we plug in 0 for x. So f double prime of 0, that's 4. The third derivative at 0, that's 8. And then the fourth derivative is 16. Remember what we're trying to do in this problem. We want the coefficients of the polynomial to be the correct values so that the derivatives at 0 match the derivatives of the function at 0. Here are the derivatives of the polynomial when x equals 0. Here are the derivatives of the function. I want these all to be equal. So I'm going to put equal signs between each of these rows and solve for the constant c4, c3, c2, etc. I'm going to make myself a little bit extra space so I have room to work with this here. So we are correlating the different rows of these expressions here. We want these coefficients to equal on both sides. So for the first row, we have c0 equals 1. It's not too bad. For the second row, we have 1 times c1 equals 2. The next row, 2 times 1 times c2 equals 4. Then 3 times 2 times 1, c3 equals 8. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, c4 equals 16. Again, we have factorials here. 4 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 0 factorial right here. So if we want to solve for these c's, we're going to divide through by factorials on each side. Here's what we get. c0, I can write it as 1, or I can write it in this slightly different form. 1 divided by 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, so 1 over 0 factorial is still just 1. c1 is c1 equals 2 divided by 1 factorial. For c2, c2 equals 4 divided by 2 factorial. c3, 8 divided by 3 factorial. And c4, 16 divided by 4 factorial. These are the values for the coefficients of our original polynomial, so that the derivatives of this polynomial at 0 will match the derivatives of the function at 0 up to the fourth derivative. 
Notice the pattern here. In the denominators, we have factorials. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 factorial. In the numerators, we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Those are powers of 2. The numerators, these powers of 2, these came specifically from the function that we chose for this example. But the denominators with the factorials are going to be part of a general formula for something called Taylor series. Now that we've successfully found the values of these coefficients, let's write out the polynomial in terms of these values that we just found, and then we'll take a look at it in Desmos and compare it to this function e to the 2x. So our polynomial here, p of x, it is the constant term, c0, 1 over 0 factorial, plus c1, which is 2 over 1 factorial, plus uh, times x, plus c2, 4 over 2 factorial times x squared, the next term, 8 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed, plus 16 divided by 4 factorial x to the fourth. This polynomial is going to look roughly like the function e to the 2x, because the first four derivatives are the same for both of these functions. So when we're close to x equals 0, these two functions are going to look really similar. Let's check it out in Desmos. We'll start by drawing the function f of x equals e to the 2x. And now we'll graph the polynomial p of x. And I'm going to do this one term at a time, and I want you to notice as we graph more and more terms how the polynomial starts to look more and more like the function e to the 2x as long as we're close to 0. So we first have uh, p of x equals 1 divided by 0 factorial. Right now the y values match. The y value of the polynomial matches the y value of the function. When I add in the next term, 2 over 1 factorial times x, now the y values of the functions match, and also the slopes. Notice how actually this polynomial is the tangent line to the graph of e to the 2x when x equals 0. So now the first derivative, the slope, matches, and so does the y value. Let's add in the degree 2 term. Notice how the polynomial is starting to look more and more like e to the 2x. Now the y values match, the first derivatives match, and also the curvature matches because I have up to the second derivative which describes curvature. Let's add in the next term. The polynomial is looking closer and closer to the function e to the 2x as long as we're close to x equals 0. One more term to add in here. Now if we zoom in on the function and the polynomial close to 0, they're basically indistinguishable. They look identical. The more terms we add to the polynomial, the closer and closer the polynomial will start to match this function. If we can continue this pattern, we will get a power series that actually equals the function e to the 2x. That's what we're going to do in the next example. For example 2, we want to continue the pattern that we found in the polynomial from example 1 and see if we can write an infinite power series where all the derivatives of the infinite power series equal the derivatives of e to the 2x at x equals 0. So here's the polynomial that we found from example 1, and we want to notice a pattern here and see if we can write an infinite series expansion for e to the 2x. Do you see a pattern in these coefficients? Well, look at the numerators. We have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Those are powers of 2. We can represent a power of 2 as 2 to the n, power of 2. How about in the denominators? 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial. There's another pattern. So in the denominators here, we have n factorial. n starts at 0, so we're going to have the sum where n goes from 0 to infinity. And let's just think of checking the first couple terms here. If we plug in n equals 0, we'd have 2 to the 0, that's 1, and 0 factorial, that's what we want. If we plug in the next value for the index, n equals 1, then we have 2 to the first divided by 1 factorial, yes, that's what we want. We're just missing the x's now. Well, that's easy to fix. We just multiply by x to the n. The first term, x to the 0, we just have 1, uh, then x to the first, x squared. So this infinite power series is the continuation of this polynomial, and this infinite power series actually equals the function e to the 2x. Let's check it out in Desmos. Here again is our function e to the 2x. This is the degree 4 polynomial we found from example 1, which is a pretty close match, but now let's put in the infinite power series uh, that we just found. So we're going to write sum from 0 to, I can't type in infinity, uh, Desmos won't, won't be able to handle that, so I'm just going to add a large value here, m, and then 
we'll start with m. Let's just start at 4. And m will go from 1, we'll go all the way up to, oh, I don't know, 100. And we'll see with 100, a degree 100 polynomial how close our approximation is. So the pattern that we found is 2 to the n divided by n factorial times x to the n. So here's our degree 4 polynomial written with the sigma notation that matches the degree 4 polynomial we found from problem 1. And now let's take more terms. And watch as we take more terms how the polynomial starts to match up with the function. It becomes a better and better fit to the function. So to get more terms, we're going to increase the number of terms we take, which is m. Watch what happens as we increase the value of m. We see a lot of error for those negative x values, but as we take more and more terms, the function matches up better and better and better. In fact, right here in this view window, uh, the polynomial looks identical to the function. They are indistinguishable. So let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's go up to 100 degrees. So that right there, what we're looking at here, that black graph, that is just a polynomial of degree 100. But it is almost exactly matching the graph of e to the 2x for all the x values that we can see. It turns out that when we take the actual infinite power series, instead of just taking a finite polynomial, if we let m go to infinity, then that infinite power series actually equals the function e to the 2x exactly for all values of x. It's an exact equality. This polynomial, or this power series rather, will equal the function e to the 2x. We can represent this exponential transcendental function using just an infinite polynomial.